Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Alhaji Muhammad Idris. I was born in the year 1946 in a village called Malima, close to Daru, Kalahun district. So mm -hmm. my father was a very devout Muslim. He used to do all his prayers, they perform all sacrifices uh, related to Islam. So it means that you, the village was a Muslim village? Yeah, the village was a Muslim village. Somebody had appeared there who, who was considered as a Waliw. For that's why the, the name of the village was changed from Malema to Misra. <laughs> Malema is the original is the original name of the town. It's a town where people used to meet before they cross the the river, the Mo, river Moa. That's why we because this is, it is situated on the river Moa, separate that uh, and is separated from Daru only by the river Moa. Opposite the town, there we had a Soja Barak, the military barrack. They used to they used to call him Idrisa. Mm -hmm. He was stay in that town and he got visions which made him to to start telling talk uh, preaching Islam and people he had a following. Mm -hmm. I don't know I did not know his educational background because myself I was very small. Even people came from Guinea with horses donated two horses to him as a gift. He was, if they say he was valuable, he could prophesy. Yeah. My father was a farmer. Uh, he was called first James Idris Abomo. He told me that once he was a Christian, because he used to work, work in the barracks, in the military barracks, as a tailor. So when he became a Muslim because he was a tailor. They gave him Idris' name. He took Idris' name because it was, they told him that there is a prophet in the Quran who was a tailor. So he took the name and up to now the name is part of us. Then later on he became a, a farmer, successful farmer, trader and so on. But being the eldest son, he didn't want me to attend English school at all. So he sent me to various mantrasas, we failed and I came back finally, yes, and I was sent. The, the actual primary school started in 1959. When my uncle, who was educated in English, who was an educated man, Found out that I was very clever, although I was not attending English school. I was attending. I was sent there to him to attend the uh, madrasa, the Arabic school. But I was so clever that I learned the ABC, doing most of the things that the lower primary school children were doing. So he put me into school without telling my father. So later, when my father noticed that I was now in English school, he removed them from his house to the Imam of the of Shebwe Matan, our chief down headquarters, Jalwang. So but when I passed the the common entrance exam, examination, which was the primary school living examination, he accepted. But I I had already selected a Christian secondary school. They call the Evangel EUB Evangelical Brethren Academy School. So I went there for one year, then he removed me. Okay, and brought me to Ahmadiyya Secondary School. In 1964, 64, 65, Bo, Ahmadiyya Secondary School, Bo, which was, in fact, the only Ahmadiyya Secondary School, because the others were created later on. Even in our town, there was. In the nearby, the Shekbema, Daru, there were no Amadeh Secondary School. But the only influence we had of an Amadi near our town was the Paramount Chief of Jawe Chiefdom, 
Chief Van de Von Calon. He was educated and very famous. Although we were not in his chiefdom, but we were very close to his chiefdom. And there was one man in our town who used to leave that town to go and pray in the Amadea Mosque. Everybody knew because of the influence of Chief Van de Von Calon. He, my father was responsible for me. If I there came to a point when I went now to form five, I had to leave the boardroom because he had a, a land case which he took a lawyer. Mm -hmm. In our area, land is very important because they are cocoa coffee farmers. Land is very important. So I had to leave the body home. Oh, in the body home, the body home was, had a very lasting influence upon me. Because the body home was well run, properly run. The daily schedule, early in the morning, we woke up and went for prayers. After prayers, we, we, we used to come for our breakfast. Immediately after breakfast, we came to school. After school, we used to play some games and so on. Then, after food, we used to have some rest. Then at night, we, uh, we, we used to come for prayers, Maghrib and Isha. After Maghrib and Isha, we used to go for studies. Uh, uh, the study, our, our, we used to call it prep, preparation for the next day. So they, they used to monitor us correctly. Because anybody who failed to go for the studies, you are deprived of your meal, although you were paid for <laughs> In the morning, they will come and seize your plate. In, in the dining hall, they used to do the roll call and say, all those who are absent, just don't take get out or they used to come and take your plate or uh, if it was bread and tea. <laughs> so at, uh, at night there were, there were competitions because in the school everybody was doing Islamic religious only we used to do it. So you, there used to be competition at night. It made after, uh, they, there were set time for those things, especially during the weekend. Competitions in recitation of the Quran as competitions, uh, especially we who we are now in the higher classes, we who we are now in the higher classes, they used to give us religious book to read a part of it and come and give speech on it. That's it. So those are the activities. Oh, Amadea, in those days, there were we, we, there used to be inter secondary school football, inter secondary school athletic. I mean, they used to come on the top in most cases. We, the school became very famous in in sporting. In fact, that also brought up the name of the school. Because it was the only um, a Muslim school at that time, the first Amadea secondary school. It was opened in 1961. I went there in 1964. There were so many. Mm -hmm. There were so many. There were fewer Africans. You see. Yeah, most of the teachers were Pakistanis and Americans. Peace Corps. Mm -hmm. uh, I could remember Mr. Sajjad Haida, mm -hmm. who donated to me the Quran. The Zion Second School. I came to free time to, to attend Mitimaga Teachers College. So I attended Mitimaga Teachers College for three years. Then I came to Kenema in 1971. There was, the, in 1971, there was no secondary school in Kenema, I made that secondary school. So I went to a Catholic secondary school. Uh, one of my teachers was principal in Joru, Amada Second School, Joru, Ahmad, Mubarak Ahmad. He was son of a very famous missionary in Bo, in those days. Uh, 
Nazir Ahmad Ali. If, Mubarak Nazir Ahmad Ali. Even last night I read his book, which the book which he translated from Urdu, the speeches of Mr. Tahir Ahmad, the fourth caliph. Ahmad Nazir, he was, he was a, uh, he was our teacher. He taught all mathematics. Then later on, he he went and start. He he opened Amade Second Juro. Then also Boijibo, Amade Second School Boijibo. Then lastly, he came and uh, opened uh, Newton Amade Second School Newton. Yeah, when I left, I uh, I I taught in Holy Trinity Secondary School. There, if I people like. Tijan, my brothers, but thank God, Tijan became a, a Muslim, and his other his other brother, two of them became Ahmadi Muslim. And at that time, I was when yes, when he was living with me. He came to in Kenema. Why he came to he attended that school. A Christian school where I was teaching mm -hmm. for seven years. Mm -hmm. Seven years before I went to Frabe College uh, to do my BA with honors, mm -hmm. BA with honors in French. Yes, French was my main subject. Okay. <laughs> that made me to visit France so twice. France. I went to France for one full year one academic year, then I went there again for another four, six months. Mm -hmm. uh, during, uh, after the college time, when I was a French teacher now, they used to allow us to go for these courses, mm -hmm. to, be, to uh, enable us to become very good teachers. Yes, there were seven, in, during the time I was in Frabe College, there were uh, students from Ghana, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Namibia, even South Africa. In those days, <laughs> Before, after the war, the college fell. When I did my bachelorship, I went to Kenema, and this time I went directly to to Amadia Secondary School, Nancy Amadia Secondary School. It was newly established, and. Uh, uh, he was also my principal, my teacher, El Ar Mahmoud. El Ar Mahmoud. He came here in 2007 to, to refute some of the allegations uh, written in various magazines against Holy Prophet and the cartoon. Mm -hmm. How Prophet Mahmoud made very brilliant speeches here in this town. After college, yes. I taught there for about four years. And uh, during those times, I became the kind of the Kenema city. And my dear activity was very, very powerful, was powerful going on in that time. I know there was a, there was, we used to have principals, uh, missionaries used to come and go, but because of the, of the statue of, of El, El Ar Mahmoud. Mm -hmm. he, he was also a missionary. Because of him, he actually overshadowed the, he overshadowed the missionaries. <laughs> and he did it very well, yes. He was a scholar and writer. Yes, I, I should have spent maybe more than that. But they asked me, to go to Kailam. I didn't want to go, the, the Jamaat members didn't want me to leave. The parents didn't want me to leave. And uh, when I sensed that the Amir was behind my going to Kailam, K.A. Mubashir, and he was my friend. He was my friend. <laughs> he told me, see, he, he, he told me, he said, these people should not quarrel for you. Say you should obey the mission. 
to, to establish a school. The two graduates had already gone there and they left because of the difficulties of starting the school. When I went, I met 17 peepees, 17 peepees. So quickly came uh, came Mubashir. That was it was popular. It came Mubashir. He was also a popular Amir. So he gave me 200 bucks of cement straight away. And uh, I wrote project. I had connection, contact with uh, Canadian, the Canadian uh, Peace Corps. They used, they used to have their own Peace Corps. We used to train their, when they are new, they used to call them their own volunteers. Whenever they came in the uh, at the beginning of the year, they, I, I was selected as, with other teachers to train them. Especially those who are teaching French and English. So, so they gave me the, the, that Canadian, the use of Canadian University Services overseas. They, they helped me by giving me uh, zinc and some help for that school also. And we were able to put up the first block. So in 1992, while we were there, the schools de developed very quickly. So, but the rebel war, I left. I quickly left before I was, uh, <laughs> before they arrived in Kailau. So I came and resigned from the mission. I went to meet the Magadji Charles College. I, I went and tendered my resignation because I got a job. <clears throat> At Mitimagati as well as French lecturer. Came over and said, he was my friend, he said, don't, don't, don't leave the mission. So I've got a good job now. I, I, so after spending two years there, he told me to come here to Lunge because the, the last principal who was here left to tell saying goodbye. He left for America. Ayub, Ayub, Ayub Akabo. He left without, so I was prevailed upon by the Amir to come to rescue the school. He said, don't worry, you're not going to stay here. You want to go back to Kala? I said, yes. Well, the war will soon get finished. Just come and be here for some, some time. <laughs> when the war comes to an end, I didn't know that I was coming to spend 22 years in Bula <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm very happy. I will go back to my school. Well, Kaila is very close to my village, Daru and so on. So I came. 92. 1992, yes. Okay. I came back. The school was started by a man called Tariq okay. uh, in, 1980. in 1980. I think he sat there for a long time and he was able to put up one building. The first one, that one, yes. The principal's office. But when I came, it was already in the... Because after him, two African principals took over, who also left unceremoniously. The first missionary that was sent here, a Pakistani Lungi, left. He left without taking his, even all his property, bed and everything. In the, he had no, co he didn't get any cooperation with, with, with anybody. So that's why he left. I think the record may be there. So he left on ceremonious day. But they, they told me that very important thing happened. They say, uh, the Afro Khalifa visited the school and laid the foundation of a mosque. But there was no, no Jamaat, except there were a few people who were members of Jamaat. Mr. M.I. with one Mr. Sharif, with Mr. Oswan Alice in Conte, and with one other brother who was working at the airport. I forgot his name. Then also later on, Mr. Alice in Conte, also who was a Jamaat member, died. Then Mr. Sharif was transferred. So the only Jamaat member now actually was Mr. Emai, 
when I came. Mr. Sheriff now was from the southern province. He, he went with his family when he transferred. Yes. No, Lokomasa was West established. There were missionaries there, African missionaries. I even, I think, Sedo Rama also was there briefly. But I didn't meet, when I, when we came, when I came here now, um, Amelia was, in fact, we used to go there for their circuit conferences. Those were the days of circuit conferences. Mm -hmm. When I was in Kenema, Canada, they used to, the circuit conferences used to consume a lot of resources mm -hmm. before, and those things were done two, three times in one region, or every year before the Jasa Salana. Mm -hmm. the, the, the chief of authorities, they invited Amadea to come and establish a Muslim school here, mm -hmm. the Amadea Mission. That is what I read on the, the school. There is a document in the school I left that is written there, that the children authorities, including Pawuri, B.S. Wuri, uh, the, 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 the father or the ancestor of Ebi Kamara, they were the ones actually who invited uh, the mission and they gave this land. They leased the land to Ahmadiyya mission. But the money the lease was there, it was 17 acre land. Mm -hmm. The 17 acre land, 10 leon per acre. So 170 leon mm -hmm. per annum. Mm -hmm. So by, the, by 1992, I came, the, that money was very small now. So they, made, they started making a lot of demand, and even they started, they started cutting the land and selling it. So we involved the police. The, the primary chief called me, said, so let us not do this. Go, he said, go, I'm sending you. You have to hire a vehicle. Uh, you take the landowners and the mission, uh, the mission representative here to the senior district officer. So we went. The senior district officers, officer with the men, held an interview with us. We explained our points. They explained their points. Then we came back. Then he, then he sent us back and sent a delegation of three men. Mm -hmm. So when we, uh, that delegation now, we came and sat down and made a concrete arrangement. And part of the arrangement was we should give them 15 scholarship every year and uh, 15 scholarship every year we, ha we help their children with books but the 15 children should be for the mission the mission should bring them up so we used to give that 15 scholarship but the children were never handed over so if that's why they have problem otherwise there should be no problem in their taking over the school, you see.